The film was made in 1918 by a director named Silvino Santos, who was a Portuguese director who had moved to Brazil when he was young. And he made a few films before them, but then he took his camera deep into the Amazon. Um, not just the cities like Manaus and Belém, but also further inland or upriver, um, filming indigenous tribes. We knew the film was made. But we also knew that the film was never released in Brazil because it was stolen by an associate who brought it to Europe, sold it to GOMO. Uh, it was first distributed in the UK in 1921, and then it was widely disseminated after that. But the man who stole it, not only did he change the title of the film, but he took out the director's name and he put his own on it. So suddenly you're wondering, okay, we don't know what this is. The director himself didn't know this happened. So Silvino Santos died thinking that his film was lost and thinking that his film was lost for decades and decades since it was first stolen. In fact, it was, the title was changed to Wonders of the Amazon. The original title is basically, uh, the translation would be the Amazon, the longest river in the world. And it was released, it was distributed throughout Europe until about 1930, 1931, and then all trace of it was lost. The problem, of course, is that the archives, or the one archive that had it in Prague, they had it labeled under the release title in the Czech Republic. There was no, uh, there are no uh, open credit titles, not even the director's name is on it. Uh, it's just Wonders of the Amazon, the intertitles are in Czech. So they didn't know what they had. And when they, contacted me to say, oh, by the way, we have this interesting film. We think it's from about 1924, 1925. Um, maybe it was made by an American. Uh, and then I looked at it and I realized, no, it's much earlier and that this has nothing to do with any uh, American production. So I began to do some digging and then contacted a scholar in Belém, in Brazil, who's done his doctoral thesis on the films of this director. So um, for me, one of the joys was sending him the film and say, I think I have something that you're going to be happy about. And um, he, of course, was overjoyed. He wrote immediately after watching it, saying, I never in my life thought that this film would ever survive. Um, and the film had developed this, was a legendary film, because at the time it was known that it was beautifully made, um, the same director made another film in the Amazon in 1922, but it was generally believed that the earlier film was the better film, and now we have the opportunity to confirm that. And it's it, everything about it. It's the beauty of the images, the beauty of the, of the river. Um, it's the images of the indigenous tribes. There's this amazing scene before uh, a, a ceremony for adolescent girls. Uh, of a particular tribe, and they're all joyfully running down a hill. And to see that on the big screen with the right music, and many people talk about, okay, colonialist gaze, it was a white Portuguese man who's in Brazil, 
yes, we can't deny that part of it. But we also have to, have to, re have to recognize this is probably the first time that these indigenous peoples were ever filmed. And imagine the idea if, let's say, somebody from that community now could see the film. My feeling is they're going to be less upset by the colonialist gaze and more excited by thinking that could be my great grandmother. This is, this, these are people of my family and you're seeing a ceremony perhaps that they haven't really done since. So we have to accept that there are two ways of looking at this and we need to be looking at both, not denying one and not denying the other. And that's one of the excitements about the film. Thank <laughs> you.